And next, may I invite uh, for the citation from the guest lecturer, the university orator, Professor Ikenna Kogibu. Please uh, welcome. Mr. Chairman, sir, I crave your indulgence to reply to the already established protocol to present an abridged citation on our guest lecturer, Professor Isha Alarwaju Oduyede. Professor Oduyede has made significant contributions to both within and beyond the education arena in Nigeria through the various prominent academic and spiritual leadership positions he has occupied. His vision and commitment have enriched many institutions and organizations. Professor Ishak Olaiwaju Uloyede was born in October 1954 in Adokuta South local government area of Ogun State, Nigeria. He attended Progressive Institute Agege Lagos for his secondary education from 1969 to 1973. This was followed by Arabic language training at the Arabic Training Center Agege Lagos from 1973 to 1976. He then obtained a certificate in Arabic and Islamic studies from the University of Ibado between 1976 in 1977. In 1978, Professor Oloyede began his tertiary education at the University of Ilore, where he studied Arabic. He graduated with a first class honors bachelor's of arts degree in Arabic in 1981. He several awards, such as the Federal Government Undergraduate Merit Award of 1979 to 1981. He was immediately appointed assistant lecturer in the Department of Religion, Religions at the University of Illinois in July 1980. Alumni Association between 1995 and 98 before becoming national president. In 1995, he was elevated to the rank of professor at the University of Illinois. That same year, the National Universities Commission appointed him as a consultant on educational reforms in Nigeria. The prominent positions he has held over the past two decades, including Vice Chancellor of the University of Illinois from October 2007 to October 2012, where he provided visionary leadership as the chief executive of the university. He has also served as the chairman of the Association of Vice Chancellors of Nigerian Universities, representing the interests of university leaders in the country. <laughs> on the national level, Professor Uloyede served on influential bodies like the Committee of Vice Chancellors, CBC, from 2011 to 2012, as well as the boards of the Association of Commonwealth Universities, ACU from 2010 to 2012, and then at the International Association of Universities, IBU, from 2008 to 2012. These positions enabled him to complete numerous prestigious awards and honors for his exceptional contributions as an education administrator, a perfect leader, and role model of integrity. Some of the highest national honors he has received include the Commander of the Order of the Niger, CON, in 2002. An Officer of the Federal Republic, OFR, in 2014. These honors from the Nigerian government highlight his exemplary public service to the country. In 2019, Professor Oloyede was also conferred the National Productivity Order of Merit, 
MPOM Award. In appreciation of his hard work, innovation, and selfless commitments to revamping the educational system in Nigeria. In addition to national orders, Professor Oloyede's efforts have been acknowledged through sector specific awards. In 2022, he received the Nigeria Excellence Award in Public Service Education category. He was named the Integrity Public Servant Personality of the Year 2021 by the National Executive Council of the Nigerian Association of Christian Journalists for his transparency and ethical leadership. Most recently, in February 2023, he was honored with the Icon of Education Transformation and Peace Award for his impactful reforms and promotion of interfaith harmony. Within just one year, Jan remitted 7.8 billion to the federal government under the new days to national Compared to less than 50 million relatively remitted between 1978 and 2016. So far, Jam has remitted a phenomenal 20.7 billion in operating surplus between 2016 to date. The expo exponentially improved finances enabled Jam to construct and renovate infrastructure across Nigeria to deliver on its mandate. The federal government also reduced UTLP application fee by 30% in light of jams increased internally generated development. All these outcomes exhibit Professor Oluede's stellar leadership abilities in transforming systems and institutions. Whether at the University of Delory earlier in his career or currently at JAMP, Professor Oluwede is renowned for spearheading impactful reforms. Let me be special to you to you. Because any time he comes to Abuja and you see him smiling, I know that he has a home that he's very uh, happy about. So thank you for taking care of my friend. His Grace, the former Archbishop of Enugu, uh, Emmanuel uh, Shukumi, former CJ of Enugu State, my law spiritual and temporal, my jam colleagues, particularly my director of uh, special duties, director of uh, public uh, communication, the state uh, coordinator in Enugu, and others who are here with us members of the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank God that who has made it possible for me to be here today. I can tell you it's not easy. It's not easy because when the Vice Chancellor was calling me, they replaced to remind me of this program, I ended the phone as I broke as quickly as I could because I, I was even not sure, despite my mission, that I would be here because I was a bit ill and I felt that would it be possible, would it not be possible. But I was made ill not by Ramadan, I was made ill by the fact that I took the lecture almost for granted that I know what to say until four days ago when I found it and I started gathering the materials to write the paper. 
<laughs> so that gave me sleepless nights, and that uh, forced me to have to visit the hospital sure. because I had to write the paper. So I thank God who has made it possible for me to be here eventually. When I begin to think of this address and kind of analogies that I was going to make, I began to ruminate over the challenges, the tribulations, and triumphs that I also have recorded in office at BC in 2007 and 2012. Anybody who has had great portion of running a university in Nigeria, in Nigeria, with emphasis on that, and surviving the experience intact is a fortunate fellow. <laughs> Indeed, he or she becomes more fortunate if he remains alive to tell the story. <laughs> A story about contending issues and forces, centrifugal and centripetal forces, <laughs> the positives and the negatives of staff union activities, the toxic public nature of student humanity, the nightmare of managing utilities, especially electricity bills, the idiosyncrasies of many friends, colleagues and acquaintances alike, from moves and trainings of the country, and even beyond the divide and new qualities of our local communities. Primordial pressure, the machinations of governments, both at the federal and the states, and ultimately, if not the most important of all, the paucity of funds. With what all this meant was countless sleepless nights, an excessive popping up to moons, and many lost goodwill. If you are a vice chancellor and go into that office with 10 friends, if you come back with five of them, you are done. <laughs> you will lose your times. You will have to, unless you are not a successful vice chancellor. Because they will make requests of you that your office will not make you meet. It is obvious that you never can win when you are a vice chancellor. Despite all prayers and tribulations of office, the Almighty God has left one with the capacity to smile over many of his achievements and fine moments in office. If I tell you there is nothing in the office of the Vice Chancellor, I'm telling you lies. Yes, there are problems, but also there are fine moments. We are happy that you are the Vice Chancellor. Yes, thank you. All this taken together is the life and story of an average Nigerian Vice Chancellor. These stories must be written by brother, Professor Tumba. It must be written, our memoirs be issued, and our, our sanguine experience disseminated, not only for the present generation, but for the consumption of crucial voters of that adopted office and the general public. Paradoxically, for me as social community, it is better said than done who exempt the inviting from IPPIS should equally exempt them from TST. What should be done in the case of TST is to revert the control, projectory control to the NUC. NUC is capable and competent of overseeing the university's budget as they used to be. With due respect to Senator Uwe before coming to the National Assembly, before you will go to NUC to defend your government. 
and your budget will be based on how many staff you have, what have you produced last year, how many uh, 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 academic staff, how many administrative staff, what is the ratio, how do you keep all this will be taken into consideration in determining your budget. But now, anybody who knows uh, Senator Way, the salary, the, 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 the budget can be better. So if you go to effect your budget, instead of going to NBC or to National Assembly, just go to his office. I want to talk to him properly and he follows you, come back with the bigger budget. So that's what is happening now. So what is happening now is a big drive. To be talking of autonomy, we must also be responsible. We must work on and engage diverse, diverse voices and perspectives. These are some, and I encourage you to go and read it for yourself. I think you will read at least 50, 40 pages that have some rights. There is a problem. Let us locate the number of churches in Nusuka and with domination, who is their leader? He does not interact with them. He limits himself to the classroom. He does, the church does not even know that a professor of Christian studies exists in the Because he does not relate with his constituents. That's why a professor of mechanic, a mechanical engineering dispenser. All those technicians. He works. And he was very useful to the community. Anybody who had a thick stomach, anything when they go to him, he would even snake bite. And he didn't go to school. Mm -hmm. One day, people came from Germany and they saw him and they said, Ah, you are fantastic. Ah, where did you sell by experience? And they saw that people were happy with him in the community. They said, You must be trained. And they took him to Germany that. They waived all O level results for him to go and study mercy. Wow. When this man yeah, came back after four years, and the people were happy. And they said, Doctor, you have come. Ah, we have suffered. I have a day. He said, No, I'm a specialist in pediatrics. <laughs> in pediatrics. We can't treat ourselves by saying no, 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 no. I am a specialist in pediatrics. The people are not happy. Then the people came back and they said, Doctor, you need further training. They took him again to that. And when he came back, they say, you say you are for children, we are your, our grandchildren. They say, now, I'm now an epidemiologist. The more educated he is, the less useful in the community. Oh my God. This is so that is is that our universities cannot be talking, and I was quoting, let me finish the quotation. That's my notion of ivory tower, knowledge for its sake, and academic freedom. All suggesting academia does not need to account for our activities. That's what it means. Academics and institutions, two times, have had relationship with various stakeholders in which the question is answerability. Answerability. Answer our question. To present our talk. And this afternoon, on behalf of the Senate staff and members, students and members of this community, I present on their behalf this plaque in honor of this uh, of this special lecture, which was presented by your very self, Professor Bishak O Oloide, C O N F M A L. This day, the 21st uh, day of March 2024.
for them this congratulations to this side.